Hi, this is Congressman Tom Coles, another one of our congressional chats. Uh, I'm here in my office. It's Friday morning. Uh, honestly, we shouldn't be here. The House is not in session, but the Rules Committee will be meeting uh, a little bit later today to actually make a decision about the, at least some of the legislation the House will consider next week. I will tell you, having looked at it, it is pretty inconsequential uh, legislation. We shouldn't be wasting our time on it. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, I think the House is just tap dancing for a while while we wait on the Senate to make some big decisions on the so-called CHIPS bill it's about uh, semiconductor chips in, in the country and uh, uh, science investments and efforts to counter China. There's some merits and some controversy around that, but the House could be doing some things that mattered. Um, frankly, we all know we have an inflation crisis. Uh, last week, inflation hit 9.1% year over year, the highest in 40 years. Consumer price index, which is the the uh, uh, price you pay, is uh, actually higher than that if you look at gasoline or food or uh, the cost of housing. Those are things that actually are above that 9.1%. Uh, and the producer price index also came out. That uh, came in at over 11%. Those are the things that companies buy to build things. So if they're running at 11%, you can be sure inflation uh, is going to be with us for a while. They're going to have to pass those costs on to consumer, and that's just going to build on the problems uh, we already have. Uh, Congress did do some things this week. Uh, I would say one thing, even though I voted against it, was broadly productive. That was dealing with six of the appropriations bills. Uh, that's uh, Appropriations is part of a process. You have to work it through. Right now, we're still in a very partisan phase of that. These six bills, uh, uh, increased uh, domestic spending by over 11 percent. Republicans thought that was too high. They removed pro-life protections uh, from appropriations bills that have been there in many cases for decades. Uh, and uh, we continue, even though defense was not in this package, to underfund defense. It uh, has only been appropriated a 4 percent increase. So the battle lines, if you will, are simply being drawn in the House. It's passed on a straight partisan vote. No Republican voted for it. Uh, but again, it moves the ball forward and in that sense is helpful. Uh, later on, uh, the Democrats will find they can't get any of this stuff through a 50-50 Senate with the filibuster. They'll have to come back to the table and bargain. This just is a step along the way in that process. But it's important and so I was glad to see it uh, get done and uh, perhaps we'll do some more appropriations work next week. Other than that, we spent most of the week on what I would call simply political messaging bills. That is Democrats raising issues uh, that they know, number one, legislation can't pass on, and two, quite frankly, we don't need legislation on. Uh, you know, one of the, the things was the so-called right of contraception. Uh, nobody's trying to remove the right of contraception. Uh, as a matter of fact, the bill that the Democrats presented, number one, wasn't just contraception. It would have allowed for morning after uh, uh, pills and, uh, and potentially for abortion-related medication. Uh, Republicans said, hey, if you'll work with us, we'll, we'll uh, work with you and we'll pass a bill that guarantees contraception. As a matter of fact, there's one out there that I signed on to as a co-sponsor, uh, which uh, by uh, an Iowa representative, Allison Henson, uh, which guarantees uh, contraception uh, right to, to any contraception approved by the Federal Drug Administration. As long as it's safe, you know, then you should be able to use it. Uh, and that's the appropriate way to move. Democrats gave Republicans exactly one hour's notice before they dropped the legislation, rushed it to the Rules Committee, did not go through the normal committee for, uh, legisl for legislation on this issue, energy and commerce. Uh, and so you got most Republicans voting no. And uh, that's not because they oppose contraception. It's because we're going through political theatrics as Democrats struggle uh, to try and improve their position going into the November election. I, accept, I expect a lot more of this going forward, uh, putting out bills you know aren't going anywhere, trying to get, do got you to the other side. Democrats control both the House and the Senate, so they decide what goes on the floor. Unfortunately, they can't pass everything that they, or, well, actually, fortunately, they can't pass everything they put on the floor, or if they can get it through one chamber, they can't get it through the other. So. There's a lot of political silliness going on in Washington, D.C., uh, but I expect that to increase rather than decrease between now and November. 
but uh, you know, I also hope we'll get some serious legislation done as well. And I thought the appropriations bills moving forward uh, are important in that regard. So we'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Hopefully Congress will get around to dealing the real problems the country faces, inflation, uh, which is the highest in 40 years. Obviously energy, we all know what we're paying at the pump. We'd be better, uh, better advised to spend some time passing uh, some legislation that would encourage exploration, production, and, and the increase of refinery and transportation capacity for uh, fossil fuels. Uh, it would be a good thing to pay some attention to our southern border, which uh, every single uh, month uh, we find the number of illegals uh, uh, in, entering the country increasing uh, by four or five hundred percent over what it was a year and two years ago. And frankly, that's simply because the Biden administration has no border policy other than an open borders policy. Dismantled all the protections that were put in place by the previous administration and put nothing there uh, that discourages illegal entry into the country, uh, let alone, uh, in addition, the illegal trafficking of human beings and, of course, uh, an absolute deluge of fentanyl and other illegal drugs and narcotics. Finally, uh, you know, we continue to one area that we do see a cooperation is Ukraine. Uh, that's another crisis, but uh, we're, we're doing our best there to work together. But to be fair, I think we're in the Ukrainian crisis because Russia drew the conclusion after our debacle in Afghanistan that uh, now's the time America's weak with an indecisive president and will strike. Fortunately, the uh, Congress and the administration and the two parties have honestly worked pretty well together on that. We've gotten a lot of much needed aid to the Ukraine and I think much to everyone's surprise, they've done a much better job fighting and holding off the Russians than anyone, including our own experts, anticipated. That's a good thing. Uh, but they're in for a long, bloody struggle. Um, so are the Russians. Uh, they've lost at least 15,000 soldiers in this, according to our intelligence department, uh, killed in action, and maybe three times that many wounded in five months. And uh, they're beginning to run out of equipment and run into serious problems themselves. And of course, obviously, the Ukrainians are stretched to the limit as well. So it's a slugfest, uh, one that's dangerous and uh, one that, uh, again, we need to make sure the Russians are ultimately not successful in imposing their will on a free uh, people that are simply defending themselves. They've done nothing to provoke this aggression. I'm proud the two parties have found common ground in doing that. We're not committing American forces, but we certainly are uh, trying to help people that are, are fighting very valiantly to protect their land, protect their liberty, and keep from being under the domination of Vladimir Putin. So with that, I'll sign off for this week. Look forward to visiting with you next week.